Video games are incredibly popular, especially during lockdown and during the times of COVID when people spend more time at home than ever before. And guilty, I have played more video games now than I ever did as a teenager or a kid. So in order to validate the ridiculous amount of time that I've spent playing video games, I thought that I'd have a look at the positive aspects of video games, especially in relation to mental health. And I stumbled across this paper which demonstrates four ways in which video games improve your mental health. Look, as with everything ever, it's complicated. And yes, of course you can play too many video games and you can even develop video game addiction disorder. But it's the dose that makes the poison and hence you can actually get a lot of benefits out of video games if you play the right amount. So let's talk about four ways in which video games improve mental health. But before we do, I thought I'd just introduce myself. My name is Dr. Sill. I'm a junior doctor working in Sydney, Australia. And in my free time, I love making videos about mental health, lifestyle, medicine, medical school, all that sort of stuff. So. That sounds like your cup of tea, you can consider subscribing. Otherwise, let's get into the video. Okay, benefit number one, video games improve very specific mental processing skills, such as visual processing skills, mental rotation processing skills, spatial skills, and general attention. Okay, now these four sets of skills are incredibly important in STEM subjects, okay? Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics subjects, which are, you know, a major part of the workforce going into the future of humanity. So it's really important to have these skills because they give you an advantage in those important areas. The interesting thing is shooter games, first person shooters, are the games that have the most impact on these skills. Benefit number two is handling failure. Look, to be a well-adjusted person in life, you have to have failed at things because from failure, that's when you learn the most. And when people think about intelligence, which in a sense is the opposite of failure, they think of it in essentially two distinct categories. There's the entity theory of intelligence, where people think that you're born with intelligence, that it's something that is part of you, that it's basically nature. And when a kid thinks that their intelligence is nature, it is reinforced when they're complimented in a way that says, oh, you're such a smart lad. Like that is who you are, a very intelligent lad. Whereas the other theory of intelligence, which is the incremental theory of intelligence, which is essentially uh, nurture, suggests that basically that's when people see intelligence as something that you earn. And that's reinforced when people say, well done, you worked really hard on this thing, okay? You're not just necessarily an intelligent person, but you worked hard at something and you got a good outcome. Now the incremental theory of intelligence is way healthier a mindset to have than the entity theory because when you think of intelligence as something you work on, it suggests that it's not just this thing you're entitled to or that some people are entitled to. And it suggests that it's something that you can work towards, which is really healthy. Now with video games, they enforce the latter, okay? Video games are really good at enforcing this incremental theory of intelligence because as you fail, so essentially as you do well, the difficulty gets harder so that you fail more, but you get challenged the right amount so that you improve. So for example, I play a game called Call of Duty Warzone. Now, as I play better and better, I get put with other players who are better and better so that I'm not just beating all the people who are playing it for the first time in their life. That means that it stays challenging for me and I have to work hard to keep winning at the game. But yes, I still get frustrated if I lose and that's okay, but it links well to the third benefit we're going to talk about and that's related to frustration. The third benefit of video games is that they help you process aggression. Through this interesting defense mechanism that you may have heard about called sublimation, which Freud actually talked about, um, and his daughter, Anna Freud, they characterized this defense mechanism. And sublimation is essentially when you take anger from one situation and you reprocess it and expend it on a more socially accepted form. So for example, if a boss at work has really gotten you angry and they're just really, you know, they don't know what they're doing, they've treated you like crap, you deserve better, you're getting really angry with your boss, you're not allowed to go and punch him in the head. 
not allowed to do that. So you might sublimate that into something else and maybe it's painting or maybe it's going for a job. Um, but video games are another way that is socially acceptable to vent your anger. So it's essentially venting, right? So there you have it. Video games are a very good way to vent or to sublimate any aggression. And I know you might want to think that you don't have any aggression and that's lovely, but unfortunately as a result of being an animal, a homo sapien with an amygdala, which is the part of the brain that uh, usually gets really revved up when you're angry, you have the primal instincts of our ancestors and you do get aggressive tendencies. Sorry to break that to you. So it's a good idea to find a way to manage them. Okay, on to the final point, and for me this is the most important point, because it's where I get most of my value from video games from, and that is the point of socialness. So, like these days, there are now battle royale and multiplayer video games with really good technology which let you play with your friends in real time, which is incredible to think about the technology behind that, but that's not what this video is about. Benefits of playing a game that links you with your friends whilst you're in COVID lockdown or, you know, isolating is it cannot be overstated. It's so important. And I'm saying that from an anecdotal perspective, but also from the evidence base. And there's evidence that they link to in the study that show that when kids play cooperative and social and team-based games, such as Call of Duty Warzone, that actually in practice helps them be more cooperative in real life. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found that really interesting. I know I did. I really enjoyed putting it together. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave a comment down below. I'd love to know where from in the world you are. So if you leave a comment, let me know which country you're commenting from. If you want to support me personally, please leave the video a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and consider joining me on Patreon, where we can have a meet and greet call. For the first 25 patrons, I do a phone call, and uh, you can support me that way as well. And by the way, there is a link to the paper in the description below. All right, that's it. I will see you all in the next video. Okay, bye for now.